Hi, I'm Sean Arnold, and this is another brief, brave attempt in learning. Did you know that Minecraft Education Edition, like a lot of the other Microsoft products, has a bunch of built-in accessibility features to help players with disabilities access the game? They're great. You can even use the platform for teaching about real-world inclusivity. So let's go ahead and get into it. So you've likely already seen how things like multiplayer mode and the chat can help your struggling learners. In addition, we showed how the built-in immersive reader is an amazing tool that can be utilized, but let's review that again. NPCs are able to provide information, provide items, or even link directly to websites. And to help make it more accessible, Microsoft's Immersive Reader is built right in. You just click the little book icon, it will read the text for the student, you can adjust colors and fonts, highlight parts of speech, translate it to another language, or access picture symbols. Now let's dive into the accessibility menu. Go ahead and hit escape or pause and you'll get to settings, then go to accessibility. Most of the tools in this area allow you to turn on text-to-speech or screen readers for your students who might have visual impairments. You're also able to turn on input hints or show controls for those new to the game. Enable text-to-speech for chat. Toggle. On. Now you can hear the voice reading it out. Toggle. For. On. Those aren't the only features that might improve a struggling learner's experience. Under game settings, you can adjust the difficulty, scroll on down and turn on cheats, make it so it's always day, so it's easier to see. And you can even go to the classroom features to go ahead and turn off any monsters or destructive items that might ruin a student's project. And if you want the student to simply explore the world without being able to break anything, you can just make it an immutable world. Instructionally, you can begin with some easy areas that will help your struggling learners get acclimated. So usually where I start with students, um, especially a lot of my early learners and, and students with more intense needs, is a sort of personal narrative structure. That's a really great place to begin because they're already beginning with stuff they know themselves. And in this world I've created, uh, they can go ahead and go ahead and build for me their perception of themselves, their perception of their family, perceptions of a physical structure that indicates things that are important to them, hobbies, uh, their home, uh, interests, and I also often have them build uh, something that they're worried or nervous or, or don't really like or are fearful of for the year. And yes, that's all a cool thing about how they indicate, create all these items and are able to build it and portray it. But the best part of it is, is that I make it a social experience. So they actually give tours of their world, either through a video or live if we're doing a collaborative world, to their peers. And that's where it becomes really intense because that's where the students are made to express all that they are internally. And there starts to build empathy for these students who aren't always really good at that kind of thing. So that's why it's a really great starter for a lot of my students. It's where I like to go right off the bat. I, I know it may seem simplistic, but it's really meaningful for what our kids do. And then we get into more traditional type of narrative things that happen in Minecraft. Yes, we use it tons for math and science and construction. And we build story settings too, where we'll have some of the older students build complex settings for the stories that they're doing. And then the younger students can go ahead and travel throughout it and experience it. Beyond that though, um, some of the coolest things I think we've been doing inside of Minecraft are our accessible design and universal design for learning experiences. And so our students with disabilities, many of them physical disabilities, uh, are building worlds that are accessible to other people with disabilities. And we model that within the Minecraft world. Directions, path to right towards home, path straight towards school. This particular world, along with other accessibly designed spaces like a school and a supermarket, gives directions to visually impaired players of where to go. Six steps towards home entrance. It allows students to experiment and determine the design they'll need for the real world. Entrance, welcome home. But then we start to design outside of it too. So that's a nice easy space for the students to start and get the understanding of what is it like to empathize with other people who might not have the same challenges I do, who might have different ones and meet the world differently? What is it like for people who can't just walk to school, right? Who don't have an easy access to a bus? What is it like for people who can't see? How are they going to get through this world? And so all these different types of things are built within those structures, um, ramps, elevators, 
uh, voice communication systems are, are really powerful. We, we build all these structures for a universally designed space in Minecraft. We can start in the Minecraft and then we start building structures that are accessible in the real world. And so that's really cool that we can build off that experience. Students can start building some simple accessibility tools like a braille map that can be experienced physically, some accessible fabrication materials that help for like students with uh, ch motorized chairs for ramp access, um, things to help students with, with uh, physical challenges more easily open up their book bags, and even, even more complex 3D printed materials that we get into later on, often in the year. Um, granted, we were doing a lot of 3D printing when we were totally remote, but uh, we have been able to dive back into some of that now that we're in a more hybrid and blended and in-person environment. And beyond that, now that it's in uh, an educational space, Microsoft has helped a lot in making it much more accessible. Yes, there is the Microsoft controller, Xbox controller, which I highly recommend. It's super awesome, super accessible. You can tap in all these switches and things to it. And there are a lot of other accessible controllers that we use. Uh, if you're interested, reach out to me and I can share more on that for you. Uh, but there's also a lot of built-in accessible features for the games, whether it be the special blocks or other accessibility features like text-to-speech or screen readers that interact with the NPCs or text displays to read everything out to any visually impaired player, uh, item descriptions in the screen, Zoom features that are accessible, and the ability to document what's happening within the game for students uh, with some more cognitive challenges. That's really meaningful too. I hope now you're aware of the accessible features that exist inside of Minecraft Education Edition, as well as some of the things you can do to go ahead and make the game easy to use for your students with learning challenges. Thanks so much for joining me, and if you found it helpful, like, subscribe, and check out any of the other Minecraft Education videos here. See ya!